All right, welcome. I'm Juan, Regional Director for Central Texas. Today, we're going to go step by step on creating an EPCR report, and we're going to go from A to Z, everything you need to know on creating, starting, and finishing a report. And I got Andre here today. So, Andre, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Okay, so we've assigned my uh, report. I'm going to share my screen. So initially, this is what they see when they log in, right? And then they want to click here, EPCR? That is correct. So I'm logging in. We're on a truck. We get a call because we got a text, and we click EPCR. Mm. When you go to the screen, you'll see on the left, it says create a run one. That's okay. where we'll hit that. Okay, so when... I get the stencil, I click, pops this up. Okay. Okay, so your run number that got assigned to you was 80. Cruise won't have this default because it's only accessible because I have admin privileges. Same with yours. This here one, uh, this poll TS CAD data, you're going to want to click that all the time. That always gets clicked okay. uh, every time you create. You're going to hit save. This is the full chart one. Okay. Um, now you're getting into the chart. This chart, that first box there is your patient signature form. So whoever, uh, your patient, you'll want to print their name underneath there and have them sign that. You can just scribble through that for now. And on the tablet, they'll just be able to sign? Correct. Now this part right here, one is really important because as you can see at the top, I clicked through that to ensure that we have times to work off of this platform. But if you click up there to the right, to the time section, those are, if the times are incorrect, you can change those times. But these are the times that dispatch clicked you through or you chose to uh, advance through on your MDT. Okay, uh, but these are auto-populate as they call correct. in and all that, but they can just correct it. That so, is correct. So th the this is... This seems like for us what we're used to on ESO. This this seems like the end, right? You know, the signature. Correct. But this this is the beginning, right? We're we're checking our uh, our times are going to get auto populated, so we can check it at the end of the report. That is correct. And then we work downwards, and we're going to put patient medication, blood pressure, pulse, and all this. So what we're going to do is we're going to ignore those boxes for right now. Okay. But if you go back to your time one, you'll see all times in red have to be completed. So if you see their destination of patient transport, that has to still be filled out because dispatch won't be able to send that to you. Got now, it. remembering that that has to be the year comes first and it's in military sequence of, of date usage. So you'll need to make that at some point a time before the unit cleared. So it has to be um, sequential. So if yeah. you go underneath that and change that unit back in service time, perfect, you already done it. Yeah. Now, your at patient bedside also has to be uh, put in uh, just at your patient on the left, the furthest down uh, time. That is required field. Uh, so you'll want to change that to 15, 18, 51 or 15, 19. And then your, your unit leaving time will also have to be adjusted to reflect that um, a sequential time. And then your uh, arrived at destination, I'd probably do 25 so we have some room to work. Perfect. So you'll hit save. And now we'll immediately go through our, our check boxes. As you can see, the home section there, Juan, it's illuminated as green. That means we've met all the requirements there. Oh, okay. So and, one, and then uh, that darkness is just because we're on this one? That's just because we're on it. That is okay. correct. Now, if you go to incident, you can start your chart. So on this, as you can see the top, you already have some green selected ones. Okay, now it's clicking fine. Okay, so I click on incident. So on at, at the home, the emphasis here is the times. We're ignoring Correct. this. Uh, we can get the patient signature, I guess, or at the end. Correct. And then we go to incident. Correct. And in this section, you'll see everything red has to be filled out. Incident number is auto-created. Incident uh, EMS response number is auto-created for you. Your medical transport and ground transport is already selected. So you save and next section. Okay, but why is it still red? Wouldn't it be green if it's... It, so up, if you scroll up to the top there, Juan, it's already green in your incident info. 
Oh, got it. Okay. Um, so that is when it tells you. Uh, red just indicates these are required fields. Okay, got it, got it. So then your next field is your delays. These are required to submit to the state. Uh, they're auto-selected as none, no delay. Uh, and they're not red, so they're not required for us, but we select non, no delays, just in case uh, you do need to change those. Okay. The next one we do see is red. And if you look at the top, that's because the vehicle number is not in there. So that will be your actual unit number. Got it. Uh, if you continue to scroll down, that level of care, uh, since one, you and I are on it, it would be a specialty care or an ALS, whatever one you prefer to use. Um, and then your next would be an on-scene audimeter. That's uh, if we put that in, uh, it would already be calculated. That actual mileage there is actually calculated off of Google Maps. So if you forget, uh, that can actually be ran off of Google Map as well. Okay, but, so this this actual is from Google Maps. So do we correct. still can, can we leave this blank since it's already there? No, so it's still a required section. So you'll still have to add zero. Oh, okay. So you have to do what zero and then one eighty four and one eighty four point and save in next section. As you can see up at the top, vehicle now turned green. That's how you know you're ready and you did not miss. Got it. it. Uh, up here, right? Correct. Okay. So now your dispatch complaint, just click no selection and free type whatever you want. So chest pain. Now you have your chest pain. You'll scroll down. Now understanding emergent is already selected and that's because in dispatch, we signified that it was a priority two, which requires an emergent response. Those are auto selected. You're not required to select those. Priority two also comes with no lights and sirens. That's auto selected. Now all you have to do is hit save and next uh, section. Okay. And just to clarify and emphasize to crews, uh, emergent is anything that is not pre-scheduled. So I know I've had some issues with medics that transported a, an appendicitis and they said, hey, this is not a 911, this is not emergent, but it is emergent because it wasn't scheduled. And according to insurance, we classify that as an emergent, right? Correct. The other term you would use is immediate. Uh, we don't yeah. have an option to schedule that. So yes, correct. Absolutely, Juan, you are correct there. Now, if you scroll up to the top again, dispatch, as you can see, is now all green. Got it. So the next section is your crew. Who is on the crew? So you'll want to go to the right there. Enter value, you'll leave that alone. And okay. just go to the right to choose existing. And then mm -hmm. put your name. Now okay. you'll need to identify your critical care paramedic one. So you'll go critical care paramedic. There, all the way to the right. Perfect. Then you'll scroll, scroll down again. And now on this one, signifies who took care of the patient. So pri primary uh, patient caregiver and transport. So you'll need to check the at scene and transport. The biggest thing about the system to remember is it's extremely important that after you click that, you hit save group. Okay, so this one, pr primary patient caregiver transport? Correct, and the at scene one, select both. And oh. that's because that signifies you took care of the patient. Hit save group. Okay, so primary patient care at scene and primary care. Okay, so we, we transported, we, we took care of the patient on the scene and as we transported, that's what Correct. that means. Okay. Now, as you can see, Juan, that auto-populated a whole nother line. And that's because this comes in and says, hey, listen, we already know Andre's a paramedic and we already know Juan's a paramedic, but the roles have not been signified. But if you choose to go in and not do it that route, the long route, you can just click on the name edit and then change that as well you can change that now so if you scroll up now that will show you what is in that group it's already selected as a paramedic and now you save the group after you edit the provider okay as you can see now it duplicates what you'd already selected the long way so you can remove one or the other okay so you can either directly edit it from down here or just click on it click a uh, create a new one and erase the old one correct and now since we're signifying we transported one it does require you to have a driver for transport so i would edit you i would put your title right yep and driver yep driver response and transport because we did transport and save group 
Okay. And I think this is something that people are going to have to get used to doing because ESO, we've been just trained. It's just going to be one, but there's always going to be one for the response on scene and during the transport. Correct. Okay. Save group. Now we'll hit that save and next section. Yep. And then, One, as you can see, now crew is green. Got it. It's a progressive, and it's based off coloration of green versus red. Now your pre-times, your, it looks like pre-times are already in, so save in next section. Post-times, you've already completed them at the beginning, but there is one there that says EMS call completed. All right, now you can save in next section. And then scroll up to ensure, there you go. Now it auto sends you to patient. Now we're at the patient spot. Okay. This so the, so the, not to cut you off. So the format is pretty much, it's going to work down these boxes. And as you get to these boxes, it's going to work like a cross. cross. Okay. Okay. Correct. So now dispatch already put in your patient's name. We have Mickey Mouse, but they don't have your address. So just oh, pause good. right there. If you can see as you're entering in your address, it auto populates these streets that that's, auto fills it out that's a great feature yeah and so then you'll go to next save and next section scroll up it's green so now we're at a really good spot here we know he's a 31 year old uh male his race does have to be selected uh and so we can do whatever you want uh and then save and next section now, on this one, phone is not required because it's not red. Okay. And social security not required? It's not required, but it is it is highly needed if you yeah. if you have it. Okay. Now, remember on this section, you have a group. So at the bottom, you can see there's a group, and that's for your insurances, okay? So as you scroll up, you can find is a pcs required any priority one or priority two transports do not require a pcs so right. in this state we'll say no okay and just that to clarify means, pcs is for a discharge and everything else higher level care is mot correct okay. uh, and so in your next section let's say we have a face sheet with an insurance you'd click insurance you would then scroll down to if you have their policy number Perfect. And then if you have their group ID, their insurance company, we can say, add, yeah, all right. Now just scroll all the way to the bottom, leave the rest, and then you're going to hit save group. Now I'm going to encourage you to delete the bill patient because that says, hey, they don't have insurance. Okay. Save and next section. Okay, and then we're all green here. Correct. So we've already identified we don't need a PCS, so we can save and go to the next section. We don't require their employer's number, so save uh, in next section. Unless it's workman's comp? Correct. If okay. it's work comp, then we would require that. Closest relative, this option was available in ESO, but was never required. So you can save in next section. Okay. Condition codes, this one actually helps you. Was your response urgency immediate? That, as you can tell, that already was filled out due to your CAD. When they sent you the CAD, it was already as identified as immediate. Then you scroll down. If any of those apply, you're more than welcome to hit those. Um, these next section, the ambulance condition indicators, those also will be identified in your MLT, uh, so which is required to be uploaded. Now your CMS level is ALS level one because we're doing a standardized and that needs to be changed to reflect your current patient. Okay. So save and next section. So because it's ALS and ALS uh, assessment was performed and warranted? Correct. And then that CMS transportation indicators, you see there it has different uh, modes that are also on your MLT. So also will be included in your narrative. So you'll save in next section. Okay. So do I have to click any of these? You do not. It's not required. But if you would like to not put it in your, your narrative, I would just hit requires higher level of care as that is our dispatch on this specific case. It's the top left. 
Oh, okay, here we go. All right. And then EMS condition code, uh, that can be confusing at times. Uh, so we will not, uh, yeah, you can use that, but that is actually a billing code. So be careful when using those. Okay, so should, should you encourage just leaving it blank? Correct. I would leave okay. that one blank. Okay. Uh, and then your next, uh, that one is a purpose of description. That is not required. Okay. So save and next. Correct. Save and next. This, as you can see, it already has your group. It's It says save group at the bottom. So let's say they're on a bunch of medications uh, and you want to save that medication in there. So you'll okay. go to albuterol. Uh, the dose is not required, but if you have the dosing, that's okay. Or you can scroll down and just add the specific medication under save group. Okay. Is this medication that I gave them or that they this take? Is the patient's current medications. Okay. And as you can see, it popped down at the bottom. And then you can save in next group, next section. Sorry. Okay. Medical allergies, do they have allergies? Now you'll have to scroll to the bottom and save that group as well. Uh, I, no, this does not require a save group. Okay. So I just clicked a few here that apply to the patient and save and next, right? Yes. Supply now this items. one is your supplies. Did you use gloves? What did you use? You fill that in. So does this one have like the ALS base rate and all that stuff that we had? No, in ASO? we do okay. not have that anymore because that's identified in another section. Okay, so just whatever, whatever so we use. Let's say we done an IV eighteen gauge, or is, or that that would work as well. So how many did you use? We used one, and then save the group. Anytime there's a save group at the bottom, you have to save the group to move okay. to the next section. Okay. So, so save in next section. So we're all green here. Incident location. This, we're going to a hospital. Everything is, else is already filled out The only, from your CAD. So this is kind of a give me free freebie because the CAD is already filled out. So then you can go to the save next section. Now here's your complaint, chest pain. Is this specific patient? Where is the pain? It's in his chest. And then your chief system will say cardiovascular. And then how long did it go on for? Yep. And then save group. Now you've met the requirements and you can go to the next section. And as you see, complaint now is green. Your next one is your patient acuity. This one, critical or emergent or lower. This does not affect emergent versus non-emergent. This is actually your assessment. There is no injury. Primary symptoms was chest pain. And then your impression also would probably be chest pain. And then save in next section. Did the patient go on cardiac arrest on you? Probably not. Perfect. Now the next one is already filled out. The reason is because we rarely transport multiple patients. Okay. But you can save and go to the next one because it's not a mass casualty incident. This one here is in regards to an accident. If you marked yes for injury, this then would, would be required to fill out if it's a if it's it's activated by a motor vehicle accident. Okay, so this is only if they have an accident. What does the ACN stand for? ACN oh, automated yeah, collision. Okay, it tells you, I guess, uh, if you hover. Yeah. Oh, cool. And so then save in next section. Now you're in your assessment. Now this is the area that you have to really focus on because this is gonna pop up and auto-populate into your big, uh, into your gener generated narrative at the end. So when you're looking at this, you already have the weight in kilo, so you can save and go to the next section. Now this one here is very important because without you filling out a group here, you then cannot fill out uh, the rest of the chart or the rest of the assessment tab. So here you'd go to, uh, within our time frame, I believe it was 1524. I would just do 1523 or whatever. 1523. We have one in the middle. Perfect. Okay. And now, as you can tell, everything is marked status not done. Uh, but you can change those to, if you've done them not, if they're baseline. Those are set defaults um, because you're going to go further into the assessment.
and, and are these all um we're still requiring them so when we had eso we required one initial assessment correct so you are required to do at least a assessment one assessment and if you did not assess the neck don't write anything in there you would leave it as not done so in your uh, heart assessment if you click on that one that is more comprehensive it goes to murmurs s1 s2 s3 s4 uh so it's if you did not do it uh or you didn't assess for it don't state that you did because if the patient has a heart murmur that you don't and it contradicts uh you want to be careful now you have to save that group got it now the great part about this is when you go to save next section your assessment time go up to where it says associated assessment group click that where it says select and now oh. select that okay now okay you never have to hit in another time okay now, and then and then if you want to start a second group you can go back to correct. general okay correct and or main it'd be under main under main um, okay but now you assess your your bilaterals are they equal reactive uh and then save group and now go to spine yep there you go and now this one normal or are they complaining of anything save group this one doesn't have a not done you have to do it i guess correct this one does not have a not done uh so oh, what, hey, it does it does here actually. oh it does okay perfect so you cannot have cancel selection on this uh box so i would change that to back general because you didn't assess their back and Got then it. save group all right and then so now you're at the abdomen, exact same thing. You're gonna choose what assessment you're attaching this to. They're normal or not done, generalize, and then save group. Next section. So as you get used to this, these will be much easier for you um, because as you can tell, it's, it's uh... now if you don't mind for me, um, one just leaving that as cancel selection and change your normal and let's see if it saves and allows us to proceed on no change that to not done sorry okay, oh no, no it worked it worked so normal and cancel selection it still worked okay so you can go to your next section you don't have to save another group figure this is if you have any weird lacerations evulsions or, or contusions you need to know and then your next section. So now it's going to kick it to treatments. Now this is one that anything that is is orange requires an entry. Entry, sorry. So your vital signs. Let's go with that fifteen twenty three. And then your systolic blood pressure. And this is not like ESO. You can use your your nums your uh, number systems on your keyboard. Uh, it's auto selected to automatic, and then your heart rate, and then your respiratory rate, and your pulse oximetry, and then you can scroll down now. This does require a G to at least two GCSs and AFPUs. So you'll have to uh, do whatever. But if you scroll down a little bit before you select that and you go to a set all normal. Oh, OK. That's even better. Now then scroll up and then you it auto selects those as normal alert. And now you just have to choose initial GCS has legitimate values without interventions such as intubation or sedation. There you go now you've met that criteria and you can continue to scroll down on this patient we have them on a four lead so that's where you would indicate what your four lead is um, as well as above that we'll say sinus rhythm or whatever you may want perfect and then save group and you said we have to now, do two of, them, two of them yes but now stop where you're at real quick Juan and right next to yours it says copy oh copy that choose um 24 hit okay save new now then click on that and change the values that have changed okay so edit and now you don't have to go back through and do it again got it so say the after uh, 30 minutes with me blood pressure spiked up perfect 
Now, remember when, when you copied that, it erased your all normal. So go back up to your all normal. Uh, down, 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 uh, right after. Yep, right. Oh, okay, okay. So set all normal, and then, yep, there you go. Now you're going to scroll back up. Sorry, because it forgot. It doesn't click one last thing, I believe. Scroll back up. Oh, it didn't click uh, cough Correct. automated. Automated. So now you need to save that group. And now save a next section. Now you've met all your requirements for your GCS and your app boom. Now, if we try to log out, will it say, and we didn't do two of those, would it say something? Yes, it will say it at validation. Okay. Oh, wait, for some reason, it's still red. So we can go after we're done here. We'll go back into the finalization all the way down. Okay. Uh, and we'll do that at the end. So okay. procedures, did we do any procedures? This one we didn't. It's a transport. But if you did, you would need then at that point to select. Um, and save. So we just hit no and then save group? Save group. There you go. All right, so then you're going to continue through this one. This is devices which we don't stream in currently. So you'll go through that one. The next section is labs, which will be used for critical care more than anything. So the other great thing about this one is you can completely skip to your next section. Treatment will not go uh, green until we address that vital sign issue, which will show us later. Okay, so we so, go skip all of these. No, just go ahead and go down to narrative. None of these apply. Okay, so right. narrative. This is where the crews are going to feel a lot more comfortable. Click that button that says generate narrative. Now, this breaks down everything you have done or clicked. There is no need to further intervene uh, with this. Just read the, the details and make sure if anything abnormal happened or something that's worthy of being noted, this is where you would note that. Okay. Uh, if you scroll down, this is, is all is, you're doing. Is there an oh. option to make this larger like, or it types like this? Like That, that is just how it types. Okay. Uh, but you can, on a, on, if you're using another device, uh, Microsoft Word, and then copy and paste it in. Okay. So save in next section. Now, protocols have to be selected. Remembering that universal protocol is a protocol that we can use if we need to. You'll okay. have to identify whether it's an adult, a general, or a pediatric. Save group. Now you can proceed to attachments. When you go to attachments, all your attachments are required to be a photo taken up. If we go, you just click on add, profile, add file. You go select attachments, identify what it is. Uh, let's say on this one, it's an MLT. Choose file. On an actual file, you will not pull this screen up. It will give you the option to actually do a, a, uh, a photo. Photos are acceptable here. Uh, and actually, they're required now that you take a photo of every, every, uh, every MLT and every face sheet. Okay, and the so, photo with the same tablet, right? Correct. Okay. Save and next section. Now this brings us to di disposition. This here, as you can see, Conroe is already selected. So keep scrolling down. And this is- All of uh, this is filled uh, out it, by your CAD. Okay, and then pretty much we can find all the facilities in here Correct. already? Okay. Correct. But so, you should never have to find a facility because it should already be selected by your, your dispatching. Okay, how's the patient moved? Yeah. All this stuff, the, the general stuff is already picked. And then so, why did we go there? Typically in our situation, it's uh, patient's physician's choice. Does, because Does it matter here that it just says hospital uh, emergency department? You just put and, that for every hospital? And right beside it, it says hospital non-emergency department. Oh, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah. So then ED choice, I mean, choice facility. This one is because the patient the physicians needed it to go, save and next section. I did auto select semi-fowlers because that's how we transport most of our patients. 
This here is really essential. So if you look at the top, who is signing? Is it the patient, the facility signing for the patient? But if you select patient, his signature from the first page oh, auto okay. populates. Got it, got it. Now the receiving, and make sure you type in their name. So if it was in this instance, RN, we can just put RN there. So the witness is not the witness for who wrote the chart. That's if you have a facility sign. That's not a required box. You can scroll down to crew number one and it will have you there. And then crew number two will have me. And then does this review chart need to be reviewed? All of our charts are reviewed through QAQI, but if something happened and it needs to come to me, Juan, or, or another okay. regional director, now know and save a next section. So now we're at crew details. This is the PPE that you took. So uh, if you scroll down, Juan, just a little bit, you see that it has a save group there. This is required for both crew members. So scroll up. This is under Andre now. I yeah. wore gloves for that call. Did I have any exposure? No, I didn't. And then save group. Now then you have to drop down where it says Andre to Juan. Gloves, no exposure, save group. Excellent. Save and next section. Now we're in the finalize tab. This here tells me, Juan, that you only chose one and your AFPU, that one of your vitals is missing an AFPU. So if you go there and you click return to vitals. And the Nemesis errors, do we have to worry about that? So once we clear this, it shouldn't have a Nemesis error. Okay. So keep scrolling. So one... I guess we're missing these values here. Right. Oh, good point. Good catch. Oh, alert. Oh, alert. There's your AFPU error. Okay, so now save group. Treatments went green. Let's go to finalize. Nemesis is going to run its errors through. Now we have one. When a procedure is performed, the following should be recorded. So go to your procedures. And I think what we've done was we saved a group on procedures. And it's going to tell us you don't need a group. So go to your procedures tab, go all, oh, yep, remove that group. Save and next section. And then go to your finalize. So those were some common errors that we made. So now it should run it again. And now, oh. Now we're having a nemesis. And so these are typically issues with the length of the run number. So let me type that in here real quick and figure out what it is. Oh, it says the social security is not valued. Oh, okay. So go back to uh, your patient and go to social security and take a social security number out. It probably ran it uh, because it, uh, so let's go down. All right. Yeah. And then just exit that out, save and continue. And now we'll go to buy, finalize after you save and continue it. There you go. There you go. Now finalize the, the run. Now for field staff, they won't have access to force finalize. Only admin users have access to that. Okay. But now your chart is completed. Okay. And then uh, this is what they'll see after that? or Correct. So everything... So if you look status, it says finalized. Now that's saying I can now see the chart is finalized. Okay. And if they have like other runs that they want to finish or correct, they just go to EPCR. Correct. And their run list. So if you look at their run list, when you log in, it will have their runs listed right there. Okay. And they can just go ahead and correct them. Correct. All right. Well, that was great. Um, it's actually not that bad. Uh, I thought it was, you know, uh, you've been using ESO for so many years, but this ain't too bad. It's pretty simple, streamlined. I, I think the biggest issue is going to be with some of those error messages that, okay. that's going to take some time getting used to. Is there going to be like a hotline or something that they can call for certain error messages or are they just kind of Google? Yeah. So um, in your trauma soft messages, I put a submission form for the next two days. We'll have 
trauma soft personnel on site and we will have what we're calling the situation room uh, here just next to my office with myself, a regional director, two field staff members who have went live today on TraumaSoft to answer these questions with the crews, as well as our IT department will be here on site watching those forms come in as we do expect those forms to come in. And you'll be able to access those through the URL sent through your TraumaSoft. Great, great. Well, excellent. Thanks for the tutorial and catch you guys later. Thank you. Catch you later. Bye-bye now.